Hello everyone, my name is Song Byung Yang from Kyung University. Uh, this is my uh, our last session. Uh, we prepared the three uh, presenters today here. So uh, following the first academic session, actually we invited three international researchers from uh, United States and Hong Kong and United Kingdom. Okay, so we, because we are uh, running out of time, so uh, I'm sorry about it, but uh, we have to reschedule our uh, the presentation time. I'm sorry about it, but uh, uh, I, I already um, share this uh, this kind of situation to the presenters. So this could be uh, not the limitation, not the problem anymore. So uh, please welcome our first presenter from uh, University of New Hampshire, Hanna Lee. Okay, so uh, uh, he, uh, her presentation will be the review triad in special distance and social media assets among U.S. food tourists. Uh, I'm gonna give you, um, let me see, ten minutes. Would it be, would it be okay to to you? Uh, I'll try. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, for the ten minute presentation, after that we're gonna have a discussion time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so hi, um, good good afternoon over there. Uh, my name is Hannah Lee at University um, of New Hampshire. Uh, first of all, yeah, congratulations to to the whole team. Um, um, and I'm I'm very honored and thrilled to present my research at the very first uh, World Smart Tourism Conference today. Um, so with this research, uh, co-authors are Jin Won um, Jin Won Kim at University of Florida. Um, Song Byung Yang and Choi Mo Koo and uh, at Gyeonggi University. So today um, I'll be talking about triadic um, spatial distance and its effect on social media presence from a social media networking perspective. Um, so the, the importance of dyadic triadic social networking lies in their ability to provide a sense of connection and intimacy that is often lacking a large uh, social network studies. Previously, we, our team, um, have studied the impact of reader, author, dyad in online review communication, applying a big data analytics and an experiment study. So with this current paper, we introduce a fairly new uh, concept of triadic spatial distance and that describe a 3A relationship and term as the triad um, the review triad and its impact on social media assets as a digital presence for brand. Okay, so um, since the time is limited, I'll, I'll just skip that this one. Um, so then what is the review triad um, capture in social media? A review triad in, in, in social media sharing is a three-way relationship with recommender, author of the review, Recommend D, uh, reader of the review, and that's that's actual voters and the business. These dyadic and triadic relationship is embedded in any types of social networking communication, and this is the smallest unit that eventually that forms a large social media network. So um, then, why the spatial social network is important to understand media marketing? Spatial social network tells us the geographical scope of social interactions from place to place. So evidence to tourist response can vary towards a review by physical distance uh, uh, between author reader dyadic network were found in our previous studies. So my provocative uh, research question was, is local recommendation always right when you decide on restaurants? Uh, so how does it sound to you? Uh, let's say you're traveling to New York and looking for a typical American restaurant. Is this information more relevant from local resident reviews on Yelp or Google reviews with the assumption uh, letting locals know the area well? Or your family or best friends uh, recommends the restaurant they have recently been uh, travel in Manhattan. So some might want to trust your friends than, um, than a stranger. Some might, you know, vice versa, right? The other way around. So of course, I mean, your family or friends who lives in New York might be the perfect uh, recommendation, but um, that never fails. But it feels so different when it comes to physically versus uh, physically far versus near. 
So uh, there are some drone arguments and doubts that such an effect exists in trouble um, recommendation. So if spatial distance matters, how about socially and culturally near or distant? It gets more complicated, right? When, when a reader in New York may place a higher, pri higher premium, um, premium on the authenticity of a taste of a New York sushi restaurant review uh, written by a reviewer from Tokyo, then on a review by the same city that reader is coming from. Additionally, the same reader may place more trust in review written by a reviewer from Hawaii, as Hawaii has a stronger connection to Japanese culture. So do you see this different uh, contradicted um, complex cross angle for travelers to kind of process their encounter when, 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 when they encounter social media communication with information providers? Um, so, so accordingly, as, as far as one individual and other individuals sending and receiving information from near versus far physical distance, individual perception encounters countless diverse and other individuals who are very different from one's culture, region, interest, background, and even social status. So cultural review, uh, culture, culture regions appear across U.S. And, and, and um, these different subculture regions can be an important variable for detecting differences in consumptive uh, behaviors. Um, culture re and the greater um, the social media presence become a large number of customers to confirm the firm can connect, leading to a successful branding and customers' loyalty and buying decisions. So specifically, social media assets um, as our dependent variable here, count the number of accounts, page, followers, subscriptions, uh, friends, rating, helpness, and any forms that contents that make up uh, the social media presence rich and quality and quantity uh, side of it of these elements that business uh, monitor the value. So basically, uh, the social media asset that we use here is indication of digital presence for brands. So our research aim to answer just two questions, very simple. Um, number one, does the triadic um, spatial distance affect social media assets? Number two, are these spatial heterogeneities associations between review triad across US domestic regions? As discussed before, the distant uh, variables in social media asset by summing useful, funny, cool votes on Yelp.com and the triadic spatial distance among three actors was measured less or more than 1,500 miles to determine near versus far distance. So since this, uh, um, our study requires a dyadic data between the parties, um, we implement web scrapping data collection from Yelp website where we can track the actual reader's profile and their voting choices under each review. So as you can see the figure, uh, you definitely see the reviews here, reviewers and information and they, their register location, the reviews. And then when you click here um, on the bottom, and then you will definitely see um, who's actually voting for this particular review. So uh, just a reminder that this uh, function of Yelp uh, has been disabled sometime in uh, March 2020. So um, yeah, unfortunately, this methodology is, is not actually um, can reproduce at this time at the moment. But um, you know, like we have solid um, insights and finding of this study, so um, I said this is like really valuable to kind of look it, look look into it. Uh, so final data of two thousand one hundred twenty nine items were analyzed in step like with with step twos. First, uh, ANOVA provides in between dependence of variables. So in step two, spatial regression analytics was used to visualize spatial um, heterogeneity over regional. Uh, space. So the finding indicated a greater distance from business to both author and reader have a positive impact on social media presence. Conversely, a shorter spatial distance between the author and a reader has a positive impact on um, social media presence. So which high, highlights the importance of a geographical stance in the 
in the review triad. In other words, in destination tourism, these confirm that the more distant travelers are from a business destination, the greater the positive effects on enhancing digital presence compared to short distance travelers. So um, on the other hand, for food travelers, recommendation by close others have greater effects regardless of the travel, um, travel distance. So which answered the first research question. So uh, to answer the second uh, research question, we um, geographical weighted uh, regression um, shows spatial patterns on each triadic relationship in network. This uh, spatial mapping implies a series of interesting insights. For, uh, for example, a far distance also review from, from the business are more favor to readers. Readers themselves traveling from far distant cities would need more social media reference. However, when it's come to author to reader relationship has an opposite spatial behavior pattern. So when you see this, um, co the spatial distribution distribution of coefficiency, we'll see uh, this is the Chicago that we measure um, as a as a restaurant, the business, and uh, you know the farther distance has more influence or more uh, more need with more need uh, social presence. Um, between business and reader is the same result. But between author to reader uh, relationship, it's opposite uh, pattern that you see here. So shorter distance has more influence uh, on their um, review evaluation, evaluation or your, your then or use uh, review usefulness. So finally, special cluster indicates the association between triadic spatial distance and social media assets in food tourism are especially spatially heterogeneous in US domestic market. Um, so which that, that answers the second question. So therefore, uh, we highlight two major, major findings, which is spatial variability and then spatial heterogeneity. Because I explained, um, I think briefly, so I'm gonna skip this one. So um, I'm going to talk about practical implication of this study. The findings, um, there, there are major three implications for industry and brand practitioners and management. Um, first, when customer collects by using search engine, the system should be able to deliver more relevant results to their um, customer. So isn't that what AI foresees um, at this is a moment personalization using big data histories for their individual uh, customer profile. So it's very similar. Um, the segmentation strategy uh, based on spatial distance could be an effective tool to navigate customer to a predictive search results. So increased relevance drives higher conversations between the networks, uh, leading increasing food tourist satisfaction in only dining experience, but uh, but also brand visibility and the connection that business feels within the destination community. And more customer and more purchase increase the data available for business and practitioner to personalization and optimization by building big data profile for their own customer profiles and so the media asset that appears, which help to create strategic approach to personally engage with their customer better. So ultimately the GWR model also provides a destination managers with a guidance on how tourist destination benefit from these user built data for tourism planning, where these spatially heterogeneous effects creates advanced localized marketing insight in terms of geographical consumption patterns. So I think this is it, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Hannah, for the, uh, your sharing the nice presentation and great research work uh, outcome. Uh, as uh, Professor Jin Won Kim said, integrating geographic information into the tourism and hospital, uh, hospitality uh, industry could be uh, could be quite big potential to expand the research mm -hmm. right in yeah. this uh, research area. So, if there is any question, one or two question could be uh, possible. Okay, Professor Ku, yeah. Your diary approach now triadic approach next is quadratic approach. What is 
going on, the quadrilateral approach. How can you apply for the keyword quadrilateral? Okay, your first one is a dyadic approach. Second one is a triadic approach. Yes. And the next step is should go the quadratic approach. So how can you formulate your research model with term quadratic approach? Oh. What could be the next dimension? Next, next dimension. Yeah. Um, oh, but uh, we kind of discussed with Professor Ku, but I will say, uh, probably platform um, sure, of the definitely. Yeah, social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we I, 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 I adding the keyword, we have a rider, okay? Rider, platform, host, and customer. Mm. There's a quadratic approach, mm. adding yes. my name to the year research. <laughs> wow. <laughs> actually, yeah, that's, that's really um, four C's uh, insight, actually, for the next dimension. Yeah, good good directions <laughs> to the next research, yeah. right? Yeah, great. Uh, one more question or opinions? All right, thank you, uh, Hannah. Uh, what, anyway, what, what time is it now? It's early in the morning. Must be early in the morning, right? Did uh, you get asleep? It's or four thirty here. Wow. Four thirty. Thank you. Yeah. Expression your yeah, yeah. your your new job over there. How yeah, yeah. Actually, that? Hannah Thank actually you. got the new job uh, in the New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Tell your yeah. story. Uh, <laughs> one minute. Okay, okay. We have time. Yeah. Uh, your 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 okay. new story about being appointed as an assistant professor in the school. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh. Well. I. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great, and um, I uh, specifically I I am graduate. I'm a graduate from Kyunghee University for my PhD. Mm -hmm. So. Um, then I got the job at Hong Kong first last year, and then I, I um, reapply in the United States. And um, this, like all the help from the well, the smart tourism team here, um, Ku and Jungnam Gyosunim and Yang Songbyung Gyosunim, those are my uh, mentor actually for my PhD, uh, uh, the program. So I really appreciate um, your help and support. Um, 지금까지 이어지고 있는데 I'm, I'm, I really appreciate it, I'm sincerely. And I really like this job um, more than anything I could imagine. Um, I think, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. Yeah, it's time to go back Inviting to sleep, right? <laughs> to New Hampshire, I never yeah. been there before. Okay, uh, uh, <laughs> let's uh, welcome our next presenter, Professor Sung Hun Shin from uh, Hong Kong Polytech University. Uh, Sung Hun, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Sung Hun, uh, uh, you're going to have uh, another 10 minutes. I, I'm sorry about not giving you uh, enough time for the presentation. Wow, nice beard. Anyway, okay, so are you ready? So please start your yeah, uh, uh, presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you. For you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Professor Young. Uh, so nice to meet you. I'm Sung Hun Shin from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. I'm happy to share one of my recent publication. Uh, the title you can see in the slide, maybe I think. So the slide is now sharing or? Oh, yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, so once again, the title is, as you can see in the slide, is about destination advertising on YouTube. And as one of the author of this paper, I would like to share what this research is about uh, briefly within 10 minutes, I will try. And just for inf your information, this paper was published in GHTR this year. So that would be brief information. Uh, the first point I should say before the presentation, actually what you can see in this presentation, what you can read in the paper would be a little bit different because this presentation is based on the original manuscript of this paper. And as you know, during the revision, many changes happen, and this is also the same. So what you can see in this presentation would be a little bit different in terms of the analysis, in terms of some terms, but uh, the main finding, the main argument is quite exactly the same with the paper. So I would appreciate if you consider that point during the presentation. Uh, can you go to the slide number five? 
Yeah, this one. Uh, if I, if you ask me to summarize what this research is about within one sentence, maybe I think this diagram is the perfect one I can show you. As you know, the, even the same content could be accepted, could be ignored, not only based on the content itself, but also the other factor, such as where the video content is played in which kind of devices, where the video content is played in some platform whether it is played in the TV program, whether it is played on the social media platform, depending on that same content could be differently perceived, location, time, and so on. So this research is about it, how the same video content could be differently uh, perceived by viewers, depending on different factor. Uh, can you go to the next slide? In this research, we focus on the platform, whether it is about TV, whether it is on movie theater, or whether it is on online website, or whether it is on video sharing social media platform. Specifically, we focus on the video sharing social media platform, such as YouTube. So the simple question I would like to test in this research, how destination advertising could be better, could be more powerful on YouTube for making that happen, which kind of a unique aspect or unique characteristic of YouTube should we consider? That was the question we tried to address. Uh, can you go to the next slide and next one one more time? So once again, these are the research question and what I went, what we actually tested. So we tried to find out what, how the framework existing a marketing framework for destination should be adjusted according to the new platform for destination advertising for video, which is YouTube. For that, we tried to specifically, we tried to examine the possibility to apply some YouTube specific practices to destination advertising context, which are native advertising and commenter filtering. I will explain later one by one. So based on this finding, we try to give some practical insight to the DMOs, destination marketing organizations, what they should have to consider among the various characteristics of YouTube for making better advertisement on the platform. So that would be the brief introduction. Then let's go to the research background. Uh, can you go to the next slide one more time? Yeah, thank you. Uh, in the literature, one of the literature in tourism field, they are talking about destination advertising, specifically video destination advertising. And this literature tries to examine whether the video advertising is significant, is powerful in different platform. And another one, which is more important, when they focus on the specific platform, they try to find what is the unique characteristic of that platform and how those unique characteristics should be reflected for making better video advertisement on the platform. When such as when TV becomes the main platform for destination advertising, they try to find what is the main characteristic of the TV, then how those characteristics should be considered when making TV commercial. It is same for the film in the theater. It is same for the website on the online. But as we know, video sharing social media platforms such as YouTube, now it is the main one, one of the main one, mo most powerful one, maybe I'd say. But the, in the literature, the discussion about this platform, which is YouTube has been limited. So we try to address this research gap. And for that, we try to explore two specific aspects of the YouTube the unique characteristic of YouTube and how those characteristics should be reflected for making better advertisement on the platform. So from now on, I will give you, I will explain what are those two unique characteristics of YouTube. So please go to the next slide. The first one is related to the viewing pattern of YouTube users. Normally we do not are, we are not willing to see the advertisement when we see something, right? Because advertisement is not we want. The main content is what matters. So in the TV, we want to see the main program we want to see. In the theater, we want to see the movie rather than the advertisement. So people generally tend to avoid advertisement. This is called advertising avoidance tendency. But this tendency becomes pronounced when we are using YouTube for several reasons. 
The first one is we become more goal oriented, goal oriented when we are using YouTube. Think about it. When we are using YouTube, we explicitly select what we want to see at the beginning. So everything is starting from our choice. So compared to when we watching TV, when we go to the theater, we become more goal oriented for selecting the content. In that situation, uh, we feel advertisement is kind of a more disruption in this case. So that could be the one reason. Another reason is actually we can avoid the advertisement on YouTube. Not always, but many times we can actually click the skip ad button. So in this way, we can avoid advertisement actually. So because of this reason, the avoidance, advertising avoidance tendency becomes stronger when we are using YouTube. From marketer point of view, this is a really big challenge. Then how they can deal with this challenge? Uh, can you go to the next slide? In the literature, many solutions have been suggested for dealing with that tendency. One of that is called the native advertising. Native advertising simply is about techniques, different techniques by which an advertisement is designed or crafted to resemble non-advertising content. So you can see some example in the below part of the slide. First one is advertorial, for example, even though it is advertisement, but it looks like a normal news article. So in this way, marketers try to make their advertisement does not look like advertisement in the social media as well, in the film or in the TV commercial as well. So this has been suggested as the potential solution for dealing with higher level of advertising avoidance tendency on YouTube. Then how this can be potential solution? Uh, for that, there is one model we can use for explaining that potential impact. Uh, can you go to the next slide? That model is called the persuasion knowledge model. Simply, this model is talking about people's reaction to the information message, including persuasive attempt, such as advertisement. So the main argument of this model, when people easily recognize the persuasive attempt in the message, people tend to be defensive about the message. So in other words, if the marketers want to make less defensive consumers, to their advertisement, the marketers should decrease the level of persuasive attempt in their advertisement, which is quite matched with native advertising. So this potential impact of native advertising has been actually examined, significantly examined in other product domain. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So some research found that native advertising is a really good strategy for dealing with YouTube users uh, advertising avoidance tendency in different product domain, but it has not been tested in destination advertising context. So based on that gap, we focus on native advertising based on the advertising avoidance tendency of YouTube users as the first aspect of a YouTube platform. And what about the second one? Uh, let's see the second one. Can you go to the next one? The second one is comment function. As a social media platform on YouTube, many users can talk with each other, not only watching the video. They can leave their, uh, they can write their comment about the video. And actually when they see the video, they can see others reactions through the comment. So in general, so viewers of YouTubers tend to consider the comment as part of the video together. So it is expected the comment would impact how they perceive the video as well. This is also supported by one theory, which is, can you go to the next one? Warranting theory. Uh, this theory simply argues when people see online content, they use different information cues. The one of them is information cues controlled by content creator. Another group of information cues are out of the control of content creator. Let me give an example. Let's imagine there is a Facebook post about self-introduction about the uploader. Of course, and some their uploader friends left some comment on the post. So when we see the post to understand what the uploader kind of a person who it is, of course, the main information on the post is important, but also we see the other's comment. Sometimes the other's comment are more powerful, more trustworthy because they are not controlled by content creator. So that was the main argument of this theory, which is quite matched with the power of comment on YouTube as well. So can you go to the next slide? 
so the power of the comment on YouTube has been also examined in other domain, business domain, but not in advertising destination context. So we also, based on this gap, we focus on comment function, comment filtering as second factor the marketers DMOs should consider for making better advertisement on YouTube. Uh, can you go to the next slide one more time? So this is the research model in overall. The independent variable is advertising recognition, which is related to native advertising. So advertising recognition means whether viewers can recognize this is advertisement or not. If it is high, it means advertisements looking like advertisement, the common advertisement. If it is low, it means it is difficult to recognize it is advertisement, which is native advertisement is adopted. So that is the advertising recognition. And you can see the two types of dependent variable, perception about the YouTube video and perception about the destination, which is the subject of a YouTube video. And the comment is included as the moderator and we separate them in two different approach. One comment is the comment described the YouTube video as advertising. And another one, the comment does not describe the video as advertising. So it is about whether the comment support for native advertising strategy or not. So the first main hypothesis is about native advertising. Can you go to the next one? Okay, Seungeun, uh, because of we are running out of time, could you uh, wrap up within two minutes maybe? Is it possible? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sorry about it. Yeah. So advertising recognition about the negative impact has been hypothesized. And about the moderator, can you go to the next one? Next slide, please. So the comment is depending on whether the comment support for the native advertising or not, the native advertising power could be improved or not would be moderated as well. So this is the hypothesis and methodology part. Can you go to the next slide? In the study one, we tested first two first hypothesis, which is about native advertising through experiment. Next slide. In the second study, we focus on the second hypothesis, which is comment filtering. Uh, next slide, please. So for the experiment, we use the KTO, the Korean Tourism Organization YouTube video, because it is famous for native advertising. So can you go to the next slide one more time? So for the participant, we show the KTO's YouTube video and ask them, next slide, these are three major question, advertising recognition, perception about the video, perception about the destination. And next slide. So this is the data collection process and the finding, next slide. So you can see both of them negatively significant. So which is first two hypotheses were supported, which means native advertising works for destination advertising on YouTube. What about study two? Let's go to the next slide. So about the comment filtering, uh, uh, sorry, next slide, next slide, next. Yeah, about the comment filtering, we did experiment as well. Uh, we showed the video together with the comment. One group of the participants, they see the comment or the comment indicate the video as non-advertisement, like with video, video or film. Another group or the comment with the exactly same content, but indicate the video with advertisement. So this was the major differences and the measurement were same with the study one. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Next one. And we found the significant moderating effect only for the perception about the video, not perception about the destination. So we think maybe the power of the comment is only valid within the YouTube platform rather than the actual product. That's what we found. And if I see you the graph exactly, uh, next slide. So both line is about non-advertising comment and advertising comment. Both line goes up when native advertising is adopted, but when the comment supporting for native advertising strategy, the changes be becomes bigger rather than non-supported by the comment. So this is our main finding. And go to the next slide. Next one. Sorry for next one. Keep, keep going. I will say stop. Yeah, next one, next one, next one. Yeah, summary is native advertising is working on YouTube for both perception about the video, perception about the 
destination, but comment filtering is limited only for perception about the destiny uh, about the video. So next slide. Uh, this is the theoretical contribution. Next one is next slide. Practical one and next slide. Sorry, limitation. I'm sorry for the limited time to skip many part on the presentation. So yeah, maybe that would be the main content I should say during the presentation. Sorry for the delay and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sung Hoon. Uh, uh, we still have time, like two or three minutes. So any questions from the floor? Please. Ku, professor. how's your life in Hong Kong? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's a really convenient time. Yeah, and it's, and it is Asian country, so it is more easier to accommodate here rather than in the U.S. Okay. So, um, your advertisement, uh, uh, the research, uh, which is a very you know necessary one in this moment. But these days, a lot of people move to the like a TikTok platform, which is more very short, you know, uh, form and a very limited time. So, uh, uh, can you say something like uh, uh, the difference between the YouTube contents and the short, uh, the reels or TikTok contents? Short uh, form yeah, video sharing good, platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so major one is actually the time, the length of the video. Of course, in the TikTok, most of them is short form video, and that makes quite different that trend out there. Uh, in the on the TikTok, what really popular about the destination video is about rather than just advertising the destination explicitly, it is more about what people are doing in in short time of period. So if you target the TikTok as the platform. Totally different discussion should be happening at there, of course. Uh, but if you ask me to compare what is the difference YouTube and TikTok, the one of the major one is the difference of the time length of the video. And also the user base, TikTok is more uh, younger generated oriented, I think. So maybe those points, if you consider for the discussion, quite a new research question could be comes up, I think. Okay, second question is a, a, a quite important one. As you know, we are heading to the conversation AI era. The AI is, a, is a contributing everything, say, even the advertisement. So probably we will soon uh, cope with the uh, AI uh, advertisement and the uh, real human being advertisement. So what do you think about that trend? What kind of your research idea about that? Uh, when I'm thinking about AI-generated uh, content, of course, many issues could be come up. But personally, I think uh, it's quite interesting for me, which is uh, whether we should expose whether this advertisement is actually created by AI or human, mm -hmm. or where, whether we should not dis disclose that information. Because the other papers about AI-generated content, they are talking about disclosing mm -hmm. AI generated or not mm -hmm. could affect the viewer's attention quite diff significantly. So maybe if we apply that as well in this context, that could be also an interesting topic, whether we should disclose this is created by AI or not, whether we should or not. That may be my personal question about mm -hmm. i interested these mm -hmm. days. Okay, so uh, because of the time limit, I think we have to stop thank here. You. So thank you for sharing your uh, great idea. Okay, hope to see you soon in Korea. Okay, uh, our last uh, presenter, uh, Hossein Olia from Sheffield United, uh, Sheffield uh, University from United Kingdom, right? So, uh, Hossein, are you there? Yes, hi everyone. Hi, hello. So, you, you're waiting so long, I'm sorry about it. Uh, because of the time schedule, actually, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to present your research. So, after the presentation, we're going to have a short, like five minute long uh, discussion today. Okay? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I will be quick. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to present my, my work that uh, is a recently published in Journal of Tourism Management. We um, myself and my colleague uh, Hamid Rudbari from University of Kent, we developed a new model to evaluate a smart tourism project, and sorry for typo. We call it the uh, Tokresa model for a better citation and attention for the future use. 
basically this is a very important uh, topic. I know that in this conference you talk about lots of projects, lots of new ideas, but how about evaluation? So can you go to the next slide? Because in the next slide, I'm going to explain why evaluation is important. Uh, so can you press button to, to just let the other items appear? So evaluation is very important because uh, it, it, it's uh, some measures of the accountability. You receive budget, you are need to stay accountable for the money that you receive as a lead project, as a government, as an organization. So at some point you need to evaluate your project and produce some reports that shows that how you spend the money, how you use the resources that could satisfy the objectives of the research. Apart from that, it's very important that you have a plan for uh, evaluation that define the way that you want to involve your stakeholders. Apart from that, when you evaluate the project, when you produce some out outputs and outcomes, some figures, and report it to your stakeholders. Your stakeholders, not only you remain them engaged, but also you are going to communicate this important message to them that their input received uh, kind of reached to the expected outcome of the project and for future collaboration, they would be pleased to join the future project as well. So establish trust between you and your stakeholders. So it's also important for resource allocation. So if you evaluate, you would know that for the future project or ongoing project, how you are going to allocate or relocate resources. And also risk management. You will learn the lesson. You would know that how, how, how things go wrong and also be transparent and have a better communication with all partners and also compliance with the rules and regulation. So if you do evaluation, you would know that which part is missing, which part could cause issues in terms of legal and legislations. And also performance management, and it's a really learning opportunity for future um, projects. But we, we know that now why this evaluation is important, but how we can do evaluate, particularly in tourism, uh, sector. We, I know projects that receive 20 million euros, more than 20 million euros, but really there was there was not a mechanism that could evaluate the outcome of the project to ensure that this money is spent very well and the project re received the expected objectives. But generally we have three models for evaluation or three methods of evaluation logical model, theory of change, and realist evaluation. So if you go to the next slide, I'm going to show you an example of a hybrid version of logical model and theory of change that I, that I use in one of my publications. This is really kind of, um, kind of still new in, in, in social science and including tourism. So as you can see, logical model, in logical model, you, your model starts from outputs. So yeah, this is like, please, can you wait? This is important because, you know, output are basically those productions of your project. Like many projects, scientific projects, we produce a book, we produce paper, we run conferences like this one. These are our output, not outcome. Still, you have a kind of a pathway to to, to transform the output to outcome with collaboration of the stakeholders. Yeah, so when you reach the outcome, you need to define the outcome and you need to ensure that which output reached to which outcome. And then the outcome, you could categorize the outcome and then conclude that this outcome could produce a specific impact that you expected by running this project you are going to achieve. So next slide, please. So now you have an idea about logical model and theory of change. The, the other model is realist evaluation that basically you, you explain the context of your, your project and also you explain how this context work and how this context is going to interact across different factors and different agents to reach the expected outcome. So this is a realist evaluation that is mainly is, is a bit micro level. If I want to 
explain the difference between these two, three models, theory of change and and re, and and, and uh, logical model is a bit kind of macro, but real evaluation look at details and micro level, basically at the organizational level. So we we identify that out of these three different models, we don't have an integrated model. So can you go to the next slide? So that was an idea to, 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 to integrate these models, but, but before I explain the integrated model, I, 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 we found that basically the stakeholder mapping, the current model, Mitchell model, that has been used by many researchers, in, including tourism and other disciplines, something is missing. One of the criteria for stakeholder analysis is missing. Basically, Mitchell model that is very popular model still is valid. Work based on three criteria, power, legitimacy, um, and, 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 and can you go to the previous slide? I try to be quick. Yeah. And urgency. We found that there is another criteria, value. And I learned from one of my project that we involve one of stakeholders and at the middle of the, the the project that is stakeholder which was very important has got lots of powers they they don't see any value uh, of being and being engaged with the project so that's why we thought that oh this is stakeholder model need to be extended that's why we introduce a new criteria of value and, and also we introduce a new category or typology for a stakeholders that we call it as a determined stakeholder. So basically in this paper, we extended um, the current model of a stakeholder analysis. Go to the next slide. So this is very important because this is an important part of evaluation. So this is an example for realist evaluation. Many tourism scholars might little know about um, realist evaluation. I provided example here, but we don't have time to go through. So now we'll go to the next slide. We integrated all these three models together. Theory of change uh, at the top, you see with the green. And then at the bottom, you have realist evaluation um, in the right and new model of a stakeholder analysis that we develop on the left side. So we integrated all these three dimensions or, or, or methods and come up with an integrated framework which is accessible to policymakers, um, managers, uh, funding body, uh, different organizations that are involved. So it's very easy to now to follow this process to, to know how to run the project and how to evaluate the project. So step one is defining the objectives. So I'm not going to again go through this. So just this probably is my last slide, um, which is about the limitation and future pathway. Basically, we, we, we can you go to the previous slide, which is um, future direction for Tokresa. We believe that this application or this framework could be used in different sectors, particularly other complex projects like a smart tourism because a smart tourism is a, such a big project even can be implemented at destination level involve lots of stakeholders that's why it's very important that we have a very clear and accessible framework to follow to drive change that we expected so other projects which are complex like climate change space uh, space tourism and circular economy in tourism context also could be uh, could benefit from this project. And also empirical validation, we just developed the framework, it still need to be validated empirically. And we believe that after validation and calibration of the model uh, is, is helpful if we develop a digital platform for this framework to help, uh, to help managers and the users to be able to to, to, to use this, this method in, in a more organized level because you know, this, all of these three methods that we integrated need a specific um, area of expertise. So it's very difficult you find someone that know all of these three uh, methods. That's why if you have a integrated digital platform, that would be more user friendly to the uh, beneficiaries of this uh, framework. So I'm mindful of time and thank you very much. And sorry for being uh, very quick in my presentation. Thank so, you, Professor Olga.
Again, sorry for not giving you enough time to uh, present your content or nice uh, research you. work. Okay, so uh, for the remaining time, we have a uh, discussion time. Any Q&A? Any question? Yeah, Professor Ku. What time is there? It's 9 a.m. Okay, world is flat. Thank you very much for attending this conference and your participation is make us uh, globalized. It's okay. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And also I appreciate your you know, smart tourism framework uh, to validate the, the stakeholders perspective. And you addressing three parts. One is uh, power, urgency. Another one, what is that? I forgot. Legitimacy. Legitimacy. And legitimacy. Okay, which is, Legitimacy. which those are very uh, the influential factor. But uh, yeah. what do you think about that the 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 dynamics condition between those three component and static condition of those three component? Sometimes where people like a dynamics uh, those three interaction together, or sometimes it just statically you know this one this one this one as a pillar. That's it. So can you say something further about that? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a very good good question, really. So, yeah, the three dimensions or three criteria are power, which means that which stakeholder has more power, like like government or funding body that they basically funding the project. They have lots of power. So legitimacy refers to the relevance of a stakeholder. For example, if you are running a smart tourism project. So associate, IT association or national um, AI association, th those might be legitimate and relevant to your uh, um, project. So the third uh, criteria that is, uh, uh, was um, basically is, if you help me to recall, is power legitimacy urgency. Uh, and urgency. urgency. So urgency. which stakeholder now you need to get on board quickly. So they immediately you need, so it's about the time of your project. Right. So these three criteria, and now we introduce a new criteria is value. You need to consider their value, what they can benefit throughout the project, which is very important for keeping them engaged. Mm -hmm. But your question is about the interaction between all these three. So mm -hmm. this is the whole point of the stakeholder mapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you define the, all the stakeholders okay. that are relevant, have power mm -hmm. and also urgent. Uh -huh. And then you give them weighting mm -hmm. and then you do analysis and okay. come up with a map. Okay. And then you define that which stakeholder has the highest power, uh -huh. perceived value, uh -huh. re most relevant and uh -huh. most urgent. Okay. So that would be your first stakeholder that you need to engage at the earliest stage and make sure that you get them on board. Okay. So you come up with the list of a stakeholder based on this criteria. Okay. That would be a place that you will play around those interactions and dynamism around these four criteria. Okay. So did I answer your oh, question? Oh, very good answer. I look forward to see you in Korea next time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you, pleasure. Professor Oria. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I really miss you. Korea and Koreans. It yeah, thank you for sharing today. your precious yeah. time. Jose, just uh, remain here. Sure. I'm going to give the profit. Profit. Uh, profit. <laughs> Price. <laughs> Price. Price. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. So, okay, so uh, this is uh, the time to go to the our last uh, session, right? Closing ceremony and award session. So by wrapping up this academic session number two here, and we're going to concede to the uh, closing ceremony and awards session. Okay, thank you very much.